So in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the characteristic polynomial here. So again, we're in a complex vector space. And so if we've got an operator with distinct eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda m and corresponding multiplicities d1 through dm, and rem remember here, our definition of multiplicity here is it's the dimension of the generalized eigenspace, then the characteristic polynomial is going to be the product of these factors z minus eigenvalue raised to the multiplicity. Uh, and then we multiply together all of those uh, terms for the different eigenvalues. So, and I guess I should point out here that this is um, for the case when we're looking at a complex vector space. Um, for the case when you're looking at a real vector space, uh, this is in the next chapter, chapter 9, uh, which actually we're not going to cover. So the way chapter 9 goes is it says, hey, you know what? If you um, pretend that your real vector space is actually just a subspace of a larger complex vector space, and here's how you embed it so that it's a subspace, um, then by expanding to the, the larger field, uh, which is algebraically closed, you now get all the eigenvalues that you need and da 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 da. Which in your first linear algebra class, they told you, uh, they explained probably slightly uh, a simpler way, just say, hey, um, pretend scalars are allowed to be complex now and things will work. It amounts to about the same thing. So, okay, so our first result on the characteristic polynomial is theorem 836 which says that if we have a complex vector space and a linear operator on it, um, <clears throat> then we have two fairly straightforward results. First off, the uh, degree of the characteristic polynomial, um, so that's a chi for characteristic, it's the, the Greek version of CH. The degree of the characteristic polynomial is the dimension of your vector space. And the second part is that um, the zeros of the characteristic polynomial are precisely the um, eigenvalues of t. And so for the proof, um, for the first part a, we have that the degree of the characteristic polynomial by definition is just going to be d1 plus up to, so we sum up those those uh, dimensions, or those, uh, sorry, multiplicities. Uh, and so that's just by the definition of the characteristic polynomial. And then by the definition of the multiplicity, this is the dimension of the lambda 1 eigenspace summed up through dimension of lambda n eigenspace. And so that's by the definition of multiplicity, um, which was in 824. And then this is equal to the dimension of V by the decomposition that, that we recently saw that shows that V is the uh, orthogonal direct sum of all the different um, eigen, generalized eigenspaces. Okay, and so um, <clears throat> then uh, let's see, for the part B, if we have that the characteristic polynomial is z minus lambda 1 raised to the d1 times all the other factors, z minus lambda m raised to the d m. If this guy is equal to zero, then from what we know about polynomials, this can be true if and only if one of those uh, particular factors in here is equal to zero, which means that um, z minus lambda j equals zero. Uh, for some j, and that's just from the form of uh, the characteristic polynomial in the definition. And then this is true if only if um, Z is in the spectrum because 
at the lambdas that we chose were the lambdas from the spectrum. So this is because lambda j is in the spectrum in the definition of the characteristic polynomial. And that's all there is to it.